Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about compound epithelium. So in compound epithelium, we'll have multiple layer of cells. As I said before also, that they can be stratified or they can be transitional. So we will see what is stratified and what is transitional. So first, we are talking about stratified epithelium. So they consist of multiple layers. They can be of three types, stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal and pseudo stratified columnar. So again, now I think you can guess from the names. Squamous are those cells which are flat and thin. Cuboidal are those which are shaped in the form of a cube. And columnar are those which are tall pillar-like cells. Okay, now let us see each of them. So talking about uh, stratified squamous. So here multiple layers of thin flat plate-like structure. So basically it is the same as simple squamous epithelium, just that you have many layers instead of one. So this ensures better protection to the underlying tissue which was missing in simple squamous epithelium. Why? Because it was very thin as I mentioned before also. The thicker the layer is, the more protective it will be. Right. So here, since the number of layers are more, so it ensures better protection to the underlying tissue or organs. It is generally found in skin to prevent wear and tear. Okay. Let us look at the next one that is stratified cuboidal epithelium. Again, this also consists of multiple layers of cells and they are all cube shaped cells. But here again, you have multiple layers. They ensure more protection than simple cuboidal. However, they specialize in secretion. So they also do secretion other than protection. So some of the places where we see this kind of epithelium is the sweat glands. Pseudo stratified columnar. So here we have an additional term pseudo. What, do, what does the term pseudo mean? It means false. So that means even though we say that it is stratified, but actually it is not. That means even though it seems as if it is made up of multiple layers, but actually it is not made up of multiple layers. So it looks like stratified, but it but is actually not. So it looks like as if it has multiple layers, but actually it has only one layer. So here in this picture, you can see since the nucleus and in the height of the cells, they are different. So one is this tall, the other one is this short. Again, the next one is tall the next one is even taller so since you have cells of different heights therefore it gives a look as if it is made up of many different layers and that is why it is called pseudo stratified so here it basically actually consists of single layer of tall pillar like cells so basically it is a simple stratic simple columnar but because of the different size of the cells, it gives the appearance of stratified and that is why it is known as pseudo stratified columnar. So it contains mucus secreting cells called goblet cells. So they can, this pseudo stratified uh, columnar epithelium can be ciliated or not ciliated. The ciliated ones are found in the upper respiratory tract and the non-ciliated ones are generally seen in the male urethra. So these are the locations where we find this pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. So now let us talk about transitional epithelium. Now transitional epithelium is something very interesting. Transition, what does transition mean? It means change. So whenever something changes from one form to another, we say a transition has happened. So here we will see how transition happens in case of epithelial tissue. Now till now whatever different types of epithelium we talked about, we saw that they are of a they have a specific structure, they have a specific shape, right? But there are some epithelium which are elastic in nature and that is why they can change their shape. So they can perform transition from one shape to another as and when required. So such kind of tissue is known as transitional epithelium. So we say that they are elastic like epithelial tissue. They can transit from one shape to another as needed. We find them in the urinary bladder. So when the bladder is empty, then 
The type of epithelium which lines it is cuboidal, but when it is full, that is when you drink, when, when does the bladder become full? When you drink a lot of water, a lot of fluids get inside your body, your urinary bladder starts to get full. And when it is almost full, you feel like you get that sensation of passing out urine. So once you pass out urine, the bladder again becomes empty. So again, you consume fluid, it again becomes full. So now as your bladder changes from being empty to being full, the shape of the epithelium also changes from cuboidal to squamous. So this type of epithelium is known as transitional epithelium. So here this picture shows the how the cells or how the transitional epithelium looks like. This is how they look like. And Initially, it is cuboidal when empty and later it becomes squamous. So when full bladder, it is squamous. When empty bladder, it is cuboidal. Let us talk about another specialized epithelium that is called glandular epithelium. So this is derived from the word gland. What are glands? Something which secretes hormones, enzymes, etc. So this type of epithelium are specialized for secretion. As I mentioned before also, there are some epithelium like whether they are columnar or cuboidal epithelium, but their main purpose is to secrete. So these kind of epithelium are also known as glandular epithelium. There are two types of glandular epithelium, unicellular glandular epithelium and multicellular glandular epithelium. So unicellular obviously made up of one cell. For example, the mucus secreting cells called goblet cells of alimentary canal. Alimentary canal is nothing but your digestive tract. So there you have glandular epithelium which secretes some enzymes and hormones which help in the process of digestion. So they are unicellular glandular epithelium. Whereas the other category is multicellular glandular epithelium which are made up of many cells. They are found in the salivary gland. So salivary gland they secrete enzymes like salivary amylase which also help in the process of not exactly digestion but it also helps to make the food easier to be broken down to simpler forms. Right? So this was another special type of epithelium. So with this, let us have a quick review on the different types of epithelium which we talked about. So some of the common types of epithelium which we spoke about is like skin. Skin you have stratified squamous epithelium. Again mouth also you have stratified squamous epithelium. So the mouth cavity is also stratified squamous. Talking about the lungs, so here you can see the air sacs of lungs, they are nothing but simple squamous epithelium. Again the kidney tubules, so inside the kidney tubules what do we have? We have simple cuboidal epithelium. Again if you think about the male reproductive organs, so inside the reproductive organs you can see stratified columnar epithelium. Talking about the digestive tract, again there you can see simple columnar epithelium, the sweat glands, sweat which you get in your body. Those sweat glands, they have stratified cuboidal epithelium. So that, that means you can try to find out which all parts have which all type of epithelium because epithelium is almost present everywhere because they act as boundaries they act as uh, linings of different organs different body parts so most of the places you'll be able to see them it is just that different types of epithelium are present at different locations based on their functions so with this i think we can end our discussion on types of epithelium thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.